All right, guys, welcome back to The Real. It's been a minute, you know, it's been a while, but, uh, you know, several room reservations later. It's been it's been a while uh, since our last episode, um, but we are back uh, just in time for the end of Black History Month. Uh, it's a very special episode. Um, we are talking black media, past, present, and future uh, with some special guests on the show uh, if you want to introduce yourselves uh hey what's up josiah bradley glad to be uh back at towson mm -hmm. and first time meeting some of these people <laughs> not first time on towson but uh marcus ellison cool 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 um for those who don't know uh <clears throat> we are uh me corey and uh gosnell uh three-fourths of the real kelly couldn't make it today um oh. but oh. yeah we one out for her <laughs> we got some drinks. Pour out my Dasani for. Yeah, yeah. Pour out some. What kind of? Yeah, I, got my, I got my Fiji water ready for. Her. Fiji water. <laughs> Pour out a muscle milk on the floor. <laughs> um, Hope you're doing well, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're we're in uh, this film society called Lambda Capital. Lux at Veritas. Lux at Veritas, and um, Josiah is an alumni of said film society it's been a while oldism <laughs> it's been a while he's an old head but you God. know we're always happy to have uh josiah on what was uh, your initiation class josiah i am mu class mu yeah oh uh, that's when we isn't that when we switched uh, over yeah that was the society? last time i got to be in a fraternity for like two minutes yeah, for nice. two minutes <laughs> for two minutes until we made a transition yep. that's all i'll say about that i got to call you a frat boy for a little bit <laughs> for over a little bit there yep that was you my... class respect mm -hmm. uh that was that was actually my roommate when i first joined uh lkt uh omicron class mm -hmm. what up yeah omicron. um so that was uh yeah I, I came back home and uh my roommate eric was like i'm about to buy you like all the vineyard vine hats and he was like dude it's not that kind of it's not a friend it's a it's a film society we some film nerds get you a visor or we'll get you a top collar right some natty natty, ice. natty bows and shit. <laughs> um so yeah so uh we're, we're talking black multimedia mm -hmm. and uh, i guess to sort of start the conversation off basically uh for this episode we're basically gonna uh, chat about you know some of our favorites uh, from all forms of media, uh, whether it be music, TV, movies, um, art, uh, etc. Um, and we're g we're gonna talk about uh, later on in the show uh, about what we want to see more uh, from Black creatives going forward. Um, so I guess to start the conversation off, uh, and this is for everybody in the room. Um, <laughs> yes, even Corey. <laughs> what? Even Corey. Um, white bread. White bread. You got to talk contribute. Your Yo, I'm about to get educated. Yeah, you're about to get educated. Um, so well, we are in school. Yep. Hey. So, uh, what were some early memories of black media for you guys? If you could think back, like, what were some of the first shows or uh, movies that you've seen um, in your early childhoods that you could talk about? Um, do you want to go around or just, just go just around at the table? Yeah. Uh, first thing that came to mind was like Family Matters, Hang mm -hmm. with Mr. Like TGI, hey, and it's Friday. So I'm thinking <laughs> TGIF from back in the 90s for yeah. anyone listening who remembers that or anyone on the panel who remembers, but Family Matters, mm -hmm. Hang with Mr. Mm -hmm. Cooper. Yep. Um, yeah, those are the first couple. What about you, Marcus? I think mine was the Cosby's. Uh, Cosby Show? Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Get to see um, Before the Fall of Grace. Yeah, before uh, the Fall of Grace. Back when, back when, uh, Back when you could look at the Huxtables and be like, "What a wholesome, yep, wonderful." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it was. Um, I remember seeing the Cosby Show come on, uh, and it was, you know, it was the, I guess, the first black nuclear family. Basically, like yeah. it was, you see that family, and it's just like, oh wow, like that's what, you know, I want to aspire to be. It's like a wholesome, yeah. hardworking, you know. So that was, I think, my first um, black television show that I remember ever seeing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about you? Gosh, no. <laughs> um, actually, my mind went to music first. Um, okay. I was thinking like all the music that my parents would always play in the house. It was usually like Jill Scott, Lauren Hill, yeah, uh, yeah. Bob Marley, Lauren. like that kind nice. of stuff. It was always like chill, like relaxing stuff that I always played at home. So nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same vein as Gus now. My mind first went back to uh, music because my grandmother used to listen to like a whole bunch of music back from when 
Well, she must have been like in her 30s or something. She was big on like that old school rock and roll, like Chuck Berry, mm-hmm. even things kind of like uh, James Brown, which like heavily influences the kind of stuff that I like to listen to today. Like, you know, I'm all about the funk. Oh, yeah. yeah. All about the funk. <laughs> yes. All about that funk. Um, I actually like really fuck with Corey uh, in terms of hey, like. Thanks, his... man. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of like his musical interests, because like he. he, he like if you just go on to Spotify, like he, like he's into, he's into some groovy shit. Like from like it, his Spotify playlist spans decades. Like you go back, like anything from like Tame Impala oh, to man. Tame Impala. <laughs> yeah, Tame Impala is free. We were just talking about Tame Impala like just the other day. Like I was trying to find out like the name <laughs> of a remix. I'm gonna need them to drop something this year. They need to <laughs> drop something for real. Yeah, because yeah. I mean like Tame Impala, like that's sort of like you know the. And I will talk about this as mm-hmm. it relates to black media. Like, there's like this twenty, like there's this like uh, thing where things start to come back around. Yeah. Like you know, this whole funk revival that's yeah. happening with you know like your Anderson Packs and everything. Mm-hmm. It, the same thing's happening with like psych rock. I feel like. Right. Like you know, Kevin Parker is sort of bringing back. It's he's making psych rock for millennials. So like you know stuff like you know jefferson airplane or like, like you know yeah. psych rock for roof parties <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, pretty much <laughs> now, uh, if, if i can piggyback off of their sentiment for a second i mm-hmm. also grew up um my parents would actually i didn't even get into rap music until i was in high school because like all of Dang, my yeah. parents would play way. like yeah. soul Dang, yeah. and and gospel in yeah. the house you know like you know on sunday morning and you hear that gospel music playing, you know he's about to clean up the house. It's time to clean up. Kirk, Fred, Hezekiah yep. Walker. Uh, I hear stop, I'm like, oh, man. You know, so, <laughs> yeah, it was, so I was just hearing a bunch of soul and gospel all the time yeah. with, you know, occasional, you know, like, R&B and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really hear much else for a long time. So, yeah, that's some of my first memories as well. So my first memories of uh, black media Growing up as a kid, you know, me, you know, a small itty bitty Nigerian growing up, <laughs> uh, growing up in uh, Gaithersburg, you know, we would, uh, my, my dad would go to convenience stores or like um, ethnic food stores and they would sell uh, dollar bin mixtapes from back home and he would play them in the car. He would play them uh, like you were talking about, like if we heard gospel music in the mm-hmm. house, it was time to clean up. If I heard like um, Agatha Moses, who is a uh, mm-hmm. if any Nigerians listening, like y- y'all should be hip. That's like the like gospel singer like back home. Mm-hmm. If you heard that in the house, Nandi, it's time to clean up the house. Like, it, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I was in the same. Song. Yep, I was in the same boat. So we would listen to that. I'm actually uh, in the same boat with y'all. Like, I didn't start to get into hip hop until um, until I played. Uh, well, it, it was like in two waves. First, I played NBA Street Volume Two. No, oh. and I remember yeah. that game. And I remember hearing like before the start screen, like you heard like the horn riff from "They Reminisce Over You" by Pete Rock and CL Smooth. Yep. And I heard that iconic. And I was like, "Yo, what is this?" And uh, this is like back in the day when like Toonami was like back right. on weekdays, and like yeah. you heard the the trance beats and the yep. drum and bass and everything. And like I was into that, and I wanted to hear more of that. But then I sort of fell off for a while because I, I didn't really listen to the radio when I was in like middle school. Mm-hmm. Then the Boondocks came along, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Boondocks. Do it. Yeah. Um, and I feel like this is a nice segue into like some of our favorite TV shows. So the Boondocks um, was actually a causal nexus of a lot of my current interest today. So um, the Boondocks helped to form a lot of my hip hop tastes. Mm-hmm. Cause I remember uh, one episode. They it, it was the episode where they tried to kidnap Oprah, <laughs> <laughs> and they and they played three Mad Villain yep. songs Man, in a row. When Raid came on, I Yo. was like, "Yo, <laughs> is that Doom?" Yeah. Oh snap. Yeah, yeah. So I went back and I uh, and I researched the songs. That's how I found out about Doom and mm-hmm. Mad Lib. Right. And then from there, I found out that the Boondocks actually had a mixtape called the Hip Hop Doctrine, and they basically brought it. It was on MySpace, and um, <laughs> throwback. Yeah. Shout out to MySpace. <laughs> yeah, back when they were a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, yeah, MySpace was a lot more than angsty white teenagers. Shout out to Tom. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But yeah, uh, I remember like downloading like the first two uh, mixtapes in the series and like just listening to like they had Little Brother on there. Mm -hmm. They had um, Cormega on there. They had Talib Kweli on there. So like starting off, I was a little bit more on like the underground side. Mm -hmm. I was I was that loser that only listened to <laughs> underground hip hop. Pure underground. If it was rapping on the radio, cuz. I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> if, if I didn't want to go near it, if it had a trap beat, I, now, I, I, thankfully, I grew up. That's yeah. I grew up. <laughs> and I, that's like, me right now. Oh, that's you right I'm now? Real. Oh, really? Yeah, we'll get back to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I used to be in a place where like, if I heard, if, if it wasn't soul mm -hmm. with a sample, with like a drum beat, I wasn't trying to hear it. Got you. But like, I mean, you know, now we're in a different place where, you know, I it's, feel like... It's 2017. Don't be ashamed. <laughs> you, can, you can listen to Trap. I, yeah, you can listen to Trap. Um... Speaking of which, like, yeah, like, you know, now that you have, you know, Migos is pretty much like a cultural touchstone at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, like Donald Glover shouted mm -hmm. out Migos during his Golden Globe speech. Um, and at this point, like, you know. And then Bad and Bougie became the number one song on the entire <laughs> Billboard oh, chart. God. Yeah. Um, Still not sure how that happened. but <laughs> <laughs> Cause Let me tell you, if something gets shouted on an award show by a hip black person, People, white people, gonna go out they and look like, yeah. "What is? What is oh, this?" Man. I can't. I can't wait to talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> what is my ghost? What is my ghost? <laughs> bad and bogey. Oh, oh my no. god, bogey. Raindrop. What's Drop a, top. What's a bogey? Is that <laughs> <laughs> I thought. I thought that was like a scoring golf. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, going back to the topic. Um, some of my uh, early memories. Uh, I remember watching Static Shock. Oh no! Oh yeah, I remember. Static that Shock show. was the show, man. Like, <laughs> so, that's how I'm about to have a moment. <laughs> Listen, man. Man, I feel a little bit lost. What's the? Oh, oh my gosh. Gosh. <laughs> he brought out that hat. Man, he has a static take shock a hat. picture so it lasts, man. Look, Shoot. I'm about to take a picture right now. Shoot. Are you kidding me? Oh, Shoot. Superhero like, static, static shock, shock bro. Yeah. First off, they had Lil Romeo do the theme song. That, for, Don't yeah, for like, I think it was like season two, uh, season three Shoot. onwards. Superhero Static Shock. Woo woo! Yeah. <laughs> Our, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My life. They yes. had Lil Romeo on an episode mm, and like yeah. Lil Romeo posed as Static. Yeah, I like, remember yo, that. that. Yeah, Lil Romeo. Yeah, static Shock was like. Shaq. Static uh -huh. Shock, I think, was a show that I wasn't expecting because first off, that predated quote unquote wokeness. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like, so you don't, you don't even know we, you, we didn't even know what the term was for that when they would have uh, episodes about, you know, school shootings or racism yeah. or, you know, stuff like that. And it wasn't something that we would really talk about. It wasn't a talking about until now where you look back on it, you're like, hey, yo, man, Static Shock was woke. Yeah, but at yeah. that time, you just don't really know about it. Well, but shout out, shout out to Family things. Matters. They did have that one episode where... Oh, yeah. I mean, um, like, in terms of cartoons. Oh, okay. My bad. Where, where Continue. I, I had no idea, like, they, the school shooting... Um, they, you know, Could one of the ways yeah. that he got his powers was, you know, like there was a gang violence right. thing happening. Yep. So it was a different type of yes. cartoon, I see what you're saying. especially with superpowers and everything where everything else, I think was like Batman, Superman, the Justice League. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he had Static Shock kind of living in its own mm -hmm. uh, corner, being its own special thing. Yeah. Which is really cool. They literally called them bang babies, which I don't yeah. think that's a term that hasn't been used since that show. No. Really. Right. They use like metahumans and like on don't, don't type that in. <laughs> <laughs> don't type in don't bang, bang babies, babies on Google. I no, gotta search this around. up after this episode. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Make Corey sure you leave the safe search. Safe search? search? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like that incognito, the incognito, <laughs> the incognito page. Yeah. No, th that uh, we should do a shout out to uh, <laughs> my my godfather, uh, Dwayne McDuffie. Yes, rest in who, peace. Rest in peace, to Dwayne. The I, in my opinion, the Black Stan Lee. Oh uh, yeah, because mm, yeah. he and a couple other guys. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Dennis Cohen and other comic book artists from like from Marvel, because mm -hmm. um, there was like no Image Comics, and I don't know that Dark Horse or Vertigo. Well, Vertigo was probably a thing yeah. at this time, but they left the big two to go make Milestone Media, which brought <laughs> us Static, yep. Icon, and Rocket. For those who uh, peeped them on Young Justice, mm -hmm. um, I didn't get to watch all of Young Justice, but when I saw Icon and Rocket. That took me back. I was like, "Oh wow!" And I comic book stores. I would hunt down Milestone comics to see yeah, just all I those colorful to, to Milestone because I had dude, no idea. 
Like, mm-hmm. and even when they would do, when DC would do their reboots and Static would show up in like New York or they'd be like Icon and so-and-so might show up here and there, I would just, I would grab them. Even if they were limited edition or something like that, I was just, I got to have these because... Dwayne mm-hmm. McDuffie was the man. Yeah, I think I think he was. Uh, was he a writer? Did he did he create Ben Ten? He might he have was created ben, with 10. ben Ten. Yeah, like, he was heavily so involved out. with a lot of Cartoon Network yeah, stuff for yeah, sure. Ben Ten, Teen Titans to some because Justice we, League. He was a part of uh, Man of Action, right? That whole studio. I think so. Animation studio, yeah, because they were responsible we'll for Teen research. Titans and uh, uh, Ben Ten. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah. Shout out to Dwayne McDuffie, man. Seriously, right. like, yeah. Um, my favorite episode of Static, uh, hands down, has got to be the one where uh, Green Lantern turns evil, and like, oh yeah, that you like when um we all thought that Green Lantern turned evil, but it was uh, really Sinestro. I did right. not see that. Yeah. You didn't see that I episode. That, no. that was yeah. one of the most lit episodes yeah. of that series. Oh wow! Yeah, that sounds <laughs> like the no, like the music. Was, the music was top notch in that episode. I remember that episode? Um, Whoa. Freaking! Um, it was that episode. Uh, the Hoop Squad. Remember the Hoop yeah, Squad? I yeah, I remember them. I yeah, remember that. yeah, I remember that episode. Um, when he teamed up with Batman and Robin, that yeah, that that, episode. that was a really good one. Yeah, or, yeah. or at least Batman, because he was like, "Where's Robin?" He's like, "With the Titans," and he's like, "Who? You'll meet him someday." And I'm like, "Oh, uh, <laughs> you'll meet him." Yep, yep, yep. I remember that. Yeah, that was definitely a favorite on Kids WB. Um, back when it was WB. Back when it was the W. You know, it's the CW. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> That still throws me off. <laughs> like I stopped watching after that point because I was just like, "This is something new. I don't like change." <laughs> <laughs> I don't like change. Nope. Um. So another uh movie that I remember watching uh every MLK Day in uh school. You probably already know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah. Uh, Our friend Martin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a huge uh movie in my childhood. Just seeing, you know, I remember, you know, seeing my my Miles uh <laughs> and his boy. I can't remember his friend. Um, what's his uh, his friend's name? Um, I'm drawing a blank too. Yeah, me too. It's been a while it's since, a, I've, yeah, since I haven't seen, seen that, that movie. Brick. Yeah, I think I remember seeing that like maybe one time. But then again, you know, I went to like this white ass Catholic <laughs> school. <laughs> this is true. In honor of uh, Black History Month, we'll be playing my friend Wa- Mar- <laughs> Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Lavar Burton, right? Vo- uh, voice. Was it? Yeah, he yeah, he was yeah. the voice of uh, Martin yeah, Luther shout King. Shout out to Lavar. <laughs> Lavar Burton. Yes. Reading Rainbow, bro. Reading Rainbow. What? Butterfly in the sky. Let me tell. Wait, I'm, I'm sure you saw. Okay, so this one, Corey Johnson showed me a video, a viral video. I don't know if y'all seen it, mm. but it's DMX singing Reading yes. Rainbow. Yes. Y'all yes. saw it? Yes. The hardest remix. That's yes. gotta be one of my favorite so videos great. on the internet oh, today. I, yo, there was like <laughs> butterfly in the sky. It's like oh, what? what? I can go places. I say more shit. <laughs> it's like take a look, nigga. It's a book, my nigga. Reading <laughs> rainbow. I'm like yo. <laughs> It's I was beautiful. so shook. I was so shook. <laughs> That's great. You think Corey. it's a game? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh. oh, you remember? You remember um, that yeah. one episode of Community great. where uh, they brought Levar, Levar Burton yes. and then Troy went Troy. catatonic. Yes, <laughs> and he was just a like, picture. "You can't just disappoint a picture." A picture. Yep. <laughs> My emotions. Oh, oh, yo, poor Troy. That, that was one of the first episodes that I've seen in Community, and. Um, I remember just seeing just Donald in that ep- he didn't say not a single line mm. in that whole episode and he was the funniest part. Oh yeah, Troy like, was always my favorite character. Like yeah, like I the show low key like went like it it kind of went down for me after he left. Mm. Well, yeah, because he was the heart of the show. <laughs> he, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, um but I yeah, like he was a source he was a source of a lot of the comedy too. Like him yeah. and Abed and like just him like interacting Bouncing off of people. Yeah, 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 that was like one of the my favorite parts. Um, um but please. another one another one oh did you want to say um i was thinking about uh the i mean we have to kind of talk about it freshmen of bel-air yes like Show. yes how did we not that mention this was before? my <laughs> what i'm wearing today yeah, you went, you know, <laughs> I, guys like know. fresh prince of bel-air i mean i'm not gonna say it's the most iconic uh you know black show but it's definitely maybe the most popular mm-hmm. like i think because mm-hmm. especially because of the the the, the intro song I yeah mean, like the intro song within the yes. course of that 
intro song, you realize everything that the show's about. Like yeah. it's just, it tells you everything you, don't you need, need to know. You can you could come in at any point of the show and you'll know Will's backstory. So you're just like, okay, yeah, he came, he got in a fight, and his mom got scared. Like, yeah. you know? I tell you, like the the one thing that the Fresh Prince of Bel Air has taught me that's sticking in my head is to not fuck around in West Philadelphia. Nope. No. No. Yeah. no. Yeah. Don't no. do it. No, you no. don't. <laughs> do I love not. how that song brings everybody from every background. Again. Yeah. Yeah. You, everyone yeah. knows the lyrics and just all the kids, no <laughs> matter got, what you're doing, right. everyone's gonna got sing this along. Image of somebody watching. Fresh Prince of Bel Air and just a Klansman comes in. He's <laughs> like, and West Philadelphia. <laughs> He's like, oh, I love that. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> everyone knows the Carlton dance. Every year. Oh that man, and like, and and it it also covered some real dark. I think because uh, Josiah and I were having this conversation a long time ago. There was this period of time before recently where black shows would be on television and it wasn't really a talking point it just felt like a thing that you like of course there's black shows on television why are people you know talking mm-hmm. about this and they would always be covering a wide gamut of mm-hmm. things from like a different world covering the n-word usage yeah or you know gang violence or will smith on uh on fresh prince of bel-air like having um his father not want him mm-hmm. yeah and, like they were mm-hmm. covering all these things and we grew up with that and it was a it was just a commonplace thing and then somewhere along the line it disappeared mm-hmm. and then now we're doing it again yeah and it's a talking point because it's like for some reason it went away for so long so yeah. now you got shows like Atlanta and everything where it's just like oh snap this is huge but you like when guys, we were we've growing, been here before yeah, yeah we were we've, growing up in the 90s here, and we're just yeah. like well, yeah. It was lit once before. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually talking about this with um, a professor. That I, you're probably familiar with her, Kalima Young. Hey, I love Kalima. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. I'm shout not out, familiar with her. Uh, well, shout out to Kalima Young if uh, she's listening. Uh, my African American cinema uh, professor. Uh, we were uh, actually interviewed her. Uh, that sounds like a dope class. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it is. It is. Um, we at, uh, actually interviewed her um, last semester for a an assignment for a news assignment. And um, we were just talking about like diversity in the EMF department and in the in the film industry as a whole. And she brought up this interest, this interesting point where, you know, we're going through we, we're obviously going through, you know, this black renaissance where, you know, more and more black creatives are, you know, seeing shows like Atlanta, like Insecure, like mm-hmm. Queen Sugar. And they're saying, you know what? You know, we, we can go out and you know mm-hmm. make stories right. and show a different type of struggle but we can just we can be just as you know quirky or irreverent as you know some of these other shows like you know mm-hmm. louis or oh, oh um, yeah that's a, <laughs> it's literally uh a converse the conversation we were having in the car yeah where yeah. it's it's yeah it's the case i i said this a while ago um <clears throat> two black creatives couldn't have gone into a, a pitch room and pitched uh, Swiss, Swiss Army, Army Man. Man yeah. yeah. Like, they it, it just happened. wouldn't have. They'd have been like, what? <laughs> like, you know, and he was like, overcome like, fuck? struggle. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, did, he, did he come from a rough background? You know, it's like, and it's got to be that way. And it's just like, we're getting to a point, thankfully, mm-hmm. where it's becoming more and more common that you could just be a person of color and just tell and just stories. Tell stories. Yeah, stories. like you can make genre films, you know, like right. with, uh, you know, um, Atlanta being as strange as it is, mm-hmm. as it is or uh, being you know, as experimental as it is. Let yeah. me let me let me oh, stop the conversation man. for a second. I just want to I just want to bring up. Go. I did not initiate discussion on Atlanta because they keep going on me for always raving about this show. They keep making fun of me. That you know, I'm always talking about Atlanta, so I purposely did not say a word <laughs> about Atlanta until y'all brought it up. <laughs> we'll see about that. We'll, we'll check the records. <laughs> Hi, I am Namdi Odujo. Have you heard of the hit show Atlanta? Atlanta. I love that show. And it's we'll, only we'll, been like what twenty minutes? Like <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> now now Corey, his veins are popping. It's been twenty minutes. I'm and he so hasn't tricked. Corey's gonna, gonna be Corey's gonna be in post. He's gonna turn all levels down. He's gonna hear Namdi somewhere in the background. Like, Atlanta. Atlanta, I'm, Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta. I'm gonna echo it. I'm gonna be like Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> all right. So you continue about yeah, what you yeah, said like, about Atlanta, like that, or or you know, Get Out was mm-hmm. the yeah, 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 genre that. film, yeah, or yeah. you know, you can do that because you know, no offense, but it's just like. 
white people can just make whatever movie they want. They, yeah. And not it's wrong. not a talking point at all. It's right. just like, of course, there's this movie about this guy carrying around a farting corpse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. What else it's would he quirky. be doing? It's delightful. He's going to learn <laughs> things whimsical. about his life. It's great. But, you know, people of color, you know, basically... Anyone of color. Anyone yeah. of color, mm. literally. It's, it's, it's got to be a thing. Right, yeah. You know, like, they must be burdened with glorious purpose and overcome yeah. and become the president of the United States mm. or change baseball forever. And it's just like... <laughs> his those name are, was Ray. They yeah. can't just be a Nina. person. They, they can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They gotta be these monoliths. They gotta be these figures. And yeah. I mean, that's great. That's one, yes, you know, yeah. like, I liked 42. It was a superhero yeah. origin movie. It was it was yeah. fun to watch. You know, <laughs> Hidden Figures is great and Say all that alone. stuff. But yeah. then you got movies like Moonlight, which is literally just a movie mm -hmm. about a kid from a rough upbringing it still falls into certain traps but it's a kid from a rough upbringing trying to come to terms with who he is and his sexuality that's yeah. all it is it's not any sort of trend setting it's not trying to be anything it's just trying to tell a story right it's basically boyhood but better yeah it's black boyhood Cause, essentially because boyhood don't it, ruin it because Gosnell has not seen it yet and he wants to see it <laughs> oh, okay, we won't yeah no it won't <laughs> spoil anything you haven't seen boyhood no 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 moonlight because oh. boyhood I is a technical I marvel I for sure I, I have a lot of respect for them taking the time out to even make that movie but what's it about it, it's about a white a white boy growing up <laughs> that's coming it. of it's, age it's a bunch of vignettes yeah. Yeah. about this kid growing up mm. and things happening to him yep but right. that's about it. Yeah, that's like the movie probably would have been better if it was about his mom. Yeah. Because there was actual story there. More con more conventional. Yeah. Because at the very least, if yeah. that's what you need. Yeah. Because it's not it's no it's, so it's not a bad film, but it's like no it's, it's, it's it's if it wasn't shot over like what was it ten years? Uh, twelve. Twelve. Yeah. 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 If it wasn't it was shot over twelve, 12 years, yeah. nobody would have really talked about it. Yeah. So it's like, but Moonlight was able to do that same exact thing and just be just tell a story. And you know, just everybody just happened to be black in the movie. Yeah. I you love, know? I love, I love like this one. Uh, like a, a couple friends of ours were talking about the Oscars, and we were talking about the idea of Oscar bait and what con God, what con God, God, now. got some things to share. Just what so what let constitutes? Him talk. <laughs> let him talk. What constitutes Oscar bait? And then, like in my mind, I remember thinking, well, I mean, you know, unless it's a story about, you know two white people falling in love singing songs i'm not talking about no movie in particular um <laughs> you sure <laughs> oh, long, long, long. Um, but um you just gotta get throat checked out i mean yeah some lodges right? but you got um, water bro i know i got some water right <laughs> but um the sars <laughs> the salty sars <laughs> um but uh yeah like unless it's unless it's like a conventional tale about white people like it's considered oscar bait like moonlight they were talking about moonlight oh moonlight's oscar bait that triggered me so much i haven't even seen the movie i've like heard so much about it and then i was like of course it's oscar bait because we, we've been trying so hard to like be recognized right. as mm -hmm. good filmmakers good creators of course it's gonna be fucking oscar bait i mean not that i agree that it's oscar bait but like still like it's mm -hmm. it's a thing like mm -hmm. hidden figures is more oscar bait than moonlight is yeah yeah, you know what I mean, and uh, it, just... and I mean like if even even if it <laughs> not is, saying that Hidden Figures is bad because it's not, it's but, not, yeah. yeah. But like even even if it's like considered Oscar bait, that shouldn't deter you from wanting to see it. Or mm -hmm. like I'm gonna tell you right now, like I don't know about anybody else in the room. I think that Moonlight should probably get Best Picture, but yeah. it's prob La La is probably gonna sweep. That's probably what's gonna happen, um, especially if if. If Barry Jenkins gets Best Director, Moonlight's not going to win Best Film. No, yeah, it's sure. the same thing that happened with uh, 12 Years, mm. where I don't think that Steve McQueen got Best Director, but, nah, but, but 12 got Best Film. So it's very rare that you get Best Director and Best Film. Mm. So, like, I feel like Moonlight should. And this is somebody I actually enjoyed La La Land, I but I saw that I movie and I was just like, "Oh man, the Oscars is going." E it's that's yeah. Uh, it was it was um it was uh was it um Honest Trailers where they called the movie Hollywood Handjob, and yes. I'm like, "Yeah, well, yeah, oh yeah." <laughs> you mean it's a movie about movies and how great Hollywood is? Hopefully, it will with be white people. Hopefully, it'll be more endearing than the artist. Oh my Anyone remember the artist? I remember the artist. 
Good well, for you, Nam <laughs> I, I, I have no clue. I don't that's know. What that's, that's the point of it. Yeah, that's the yeah. yeah. Continue. It, yeah, so it's it's um well it's also gonna it's gonna be more endearing than the artist because the artist was a silent film. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's right. Not everybody can handle that. Like at least this one has like pretty white people singing songs and dancing, mm. doing stuff. Also, do you think that the film would have been just as successful if Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling weren't starring in it? No, absolutely not. You not at all. So? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, that. just because Damien Chazelle is like a really good director. He is. So Whiplash is fire. Maybe it Whiplash. It might have not. I, I might have not caught as many. Yeah, like if it was a uh, oh, let's see, like uh, um, Michael B. Jordan and uh, Kiki Palmer. Yeah, you know, like I don't know if it would have oh, had the legs. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. And, and mm-hmm. Ryan Gosling is my man's, but yeah. like, yeah, it's. It's it fits into a exact formula. Like La La Land is total Oscar bait. It is, you know, Absolutely. like like <laughs> yeah. King's yeah, speech, really. if anything, King's La La speech level Oscar bait. Not that Moonlight. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like Moonlight is not Oscar bait at all. Yeah. It's like maybe I don't know if Sundance bait. <laughs> Sundance <laughs> yeah. bait. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So moving the discussion onto some favorite movies. Mm-hmm. Uh. All what are right. some What are some and I'll, I'll start off. Okay. Uh, what are some favorite uh, black films that you've seen past and present? Um, I'll start off with uh, a classic, a favorite of mine, Coming to America. Yeah. Eddie Murphy. Ooh, yeah. Arsenio <laughs> Hall. Um, easily one of the most quotable films I've ever seen. That's in a my good term life. for it. Yep. That's a good term for yeah. it. Mm-hmm. For sure. Because, I mean, it's good. They, they play so. It's. it's it feels like an SNL film without actually being an yeah. SNL film. You know what I mean? Because like yeah. they play so many characters. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember, like I remember the 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 argument that they had about uh, Muhammad Ali and like Joe Lewis and Cassius Clay yep. <laughs> in the in the barber shop talking about like Joe Lewis was seventy five years old when he fought. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, and then <laughs> they they um. It's like they were talking about Joe Lewis. It's like, oh, well, he beat Joe Lewis's ass. Like, oh, that's right. He did, right. did, did beat Joe Lewis's ass. It was like, then he got pissed. I was like, fuck you. Fuck you and fuck you. Who's next? <laughs> that was before, that was before uh, Eddie Murphy ran that gimmick into the ground. Yeah. And no. added fat suits. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was like his prime, really. Like mm-hmm. in the 80s, like mid. I think it was like early. was like early to mid 80s. Like that was like his prime where he had Coming to America, Harlem Nights. You knew he was in his prime because he could uh, release a party all the time and it didn't hurt his career at all. <laughs> mm. yeah. At all. Yeah. Because that um. song is glorious garbage. <laughs> it's like f- so fun to listen to, but that song is trash. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I love Eddie Murphy deep down inside, but I got to say he triggers me every time I see his face only for the sole fact that whenever I get called down for jury duty of like the three movies that they have in their selection that they play in like the jury room or whatever that thing is where Mm -hmm. you have to sit with a whole bunch of the city residents and they all smell and stuff Mm -hmm. (laughs) that thousand words movie with Eddie Murphy where he can only speak a thousand fucking words I've watched it two times in my life and I'm like no more I have no clue why they would play it there they (laughs) play that they play that and like some other um, George George Lopez movie called oh, Spare Parts. Oh, oh, oddly enough. Dude. I'm so sorry. It's, you know, it's fine. <laughs> There's no Wi Fi there, too. For that. Yeah. Oh, out of the. I feel personally attacked whenever I get called for jury duty. <laughs> I don't you blame play, like, you. Like, Beverly Hills Cop? Yeah, some like Yeah, they classics? can't play. Like, Dang. I want to write a letter to the city and be like, <laughs> you listen should. up. You need to get schooled right quick because Step your film game up your library is yeah. trash yeah. and you're trash for putting this shit out there for people you just gotta tell the truth um, tell the truth yeah the truth. <laughs> yo um alright so if we're talking about black movies of course like I, I can't not talk about black dynamite oh yeah Ooh, like black dynamite, dynamite is Dino- <laughs> one of the best satire films Ever of all time, yeah, yeah, because they, they lovingly that's like Monty Python levels. 
Yeah, like they lovingly pay tribute to the black exploitation genre, like in all of its quirks and its tropes, like the boom pole in the shot. <laughs> yeah. They have even switching out the actor. Yeah, that was shot. one of the funniest scenes from that film when <laughs> How Bullhorn you get slapped so hard that you become a completely different person. <laughs> yeah, he was like, yeah, he got slapped. He was like, motherfucker, and it cuts. And then like it's a new person and he's fighting Bullhorn's fighting a new person. <laughs> and the part where they're like figuring out the um when they yeah, they're that, that uh, roundabout uh, the roundabout thing. Somewhere Alex Ewing is ejaculating so hard because <laughs> he can sense that we're talking about not only Black Dynamite but this scene yeah. in particular. That, that was one. That, of, that was one of the fu- yeah, because it feels like <laughs> Black Monty Python almost. Because yeah. like yeah. that whole That's like they were trying it. to they broke it down like um, it was like Little Richard. Oh my God, <laughs> Little Richard. It's like what's another name for Richard? Dick. dick. What the, so, like, Anaconda Malt Liquor gives you little dick. What? What the hell? And, like, just watching scene. them come to that conclusion in the Waffle House <clears throat> while, gra- while Grandma keeps dropping dropping the hints in. in <laughs> and he's like, in, he's like, yeah, like yeah, we, we okay. got it, Grandma. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know what's my favorite scene out of the pimp scene where Black Dynamite comes in and, it's, and, and sees the whole pimp get together mm, yeah. and just chocolate giddy up it's like Black Dynamite but, but I, I sell, sell drugs, drugs to the, the community, community. <laughs> or oh. the euphoria shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah man. Man. She, she came with that slick talk she and then she was like Black. euphoria shut the fuck up I didn't even, I knew that was you I didn't even have to look let me send back to Crenshaw Pete with his hot ass coat hangers would you like that bitch would you like that oh my goodness <laughs> I think I oh, think the man. cartoon. You remember oh the cartoon that they came yeah, out yeah. with yeah. on Adult Swim, Swim? Yeah. Mm-hmm. and it was from the same team that made the Boondocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was crazier than the movie, obviously, because yeah. they could do more stuff as a cartoon. Yeah, I love um, that show. That yeah. show was so good the, and no, so short lived. My my favorite episode, which is probably like the cre- this is like the craziest that they they literally had a jaw spoof where Jaws was racist. Yep. It was oh, a racist oh, great man. white shark. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember one of the first oh, scenes <laughs> in that in that episode, the shark leapt from the ocean. There were two people, a white dude and a black dude, right? It stopped. It paused like it froze in midair looking at the white dude. It blinked for a second, switched over and ate the black dude. <laughs> And then it went into the theme song. I was like, what am I watching right now? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Because it's so ridiculous. Like, I, it's that episode. And then they had an episode where it was like like a literal like race war. It was like wacky races, yeah. but it was like the different races. Yeah. Like, they had the Spanish and the Indians. And, like, they had um, Black Dynamite representing the black community. Of course. He had... um. He had uh, a Earth the Kit mobile. <laughs> oh she was, my Yeah, it was God. Knight Rider, but like Earth yeah. the Kit's voice. That yeah, yeah. Amazing. And it was like sentient. <laughs> and it like turned on Black Dynamite at the end. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, wow. The... I got some catching up to do. Yeah, 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 that show was so good. It was, yeah. Like, it, and and it, it, I think it was like two seasons and two then seasons, it you know, yeah. went off. But I mean, piggybacking off of that, same coin one of my favorite black movies is Undercover Brother Undercover <laughs> Brother <laughs> yeah I've been thinking about that past few months actually isn't more satire male, but it's a bit more of like a, a it's it's a bit more poking fun at mm, the sure. you know the black exploitation and, style to a degree mm-hmm. yeah. and man that movie is so it's also pretty quotable yeah and like you know whether it's white she devil or whether it's <laughs> it's the main villain trying to fight off blackness the entire movie <laughs> yeah. I'm like, black and I'm proud <laughs> <laughs> or Chris or, or, or what's his name Neil Patrick Harris my yeah. white shark being, being uh, the affirmative <laughs> action hire <laughs> you know, or conspiracy brother played by Dave Chappelle. Oh my goodness! That was my first foray into Dave Chappelle. Actually, really? I remember hearing his name, but see, I didn't have cable growing up, so I didn't get comedy. It was Comedy Central, comedy right? Central yeah. so I didn't get any of it. But I heard his name all the time, and then I love at the very end. I loved him in the movie. Mm-hmm. So at the very end, I realized I somehow I, I it was probably just my parents reading the credits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was Dave Chappelle. I was like. I've been watching Dave Chappelle all this time. All this time. This is glorious. <laughs> That's it. I'm joining the clan. <laughs> Bill Clinton. Black man. Oh my God. And that was also when I first learned of NPH. 
Yeah. To his Me too. credit. Me too. That was the first time before, I learned who NPH was. Yeah, before How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, yeah that was like a, f- a few years before that. Mm-hmm. Actually, also, that line, that movie has a line that, okay, so I used to date a white girl. Yeah. And, <laughs> that's uh, not the line he's talking about no. his life. <laughs> his real right, yeah, that's, not the, that's not the line. Marcus is, okay, and just to clarify. the first thing that the homie said to me was, does she got pink nipples? Is it everything I dreamed? <laughs> Oh, God. oh man! Oh, horrible <laughs> movie. Oh, uh, yeah, another. All right, so um, we could talk about comedies, you know, all the live long day. But I feel we should get mm. into some some dramas as well. Mm. Um, <clears throat> first thing that comes in my uh, to my mind is uh, Creed. Oh man, Creed's a great. Mm. One. Yeah, I yeah. remember watching Creed. Um, I saw it with Val and Austin, mm. and Val was like excited as fuck because you know philly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like we watched the movie and then i think that was the first that was i think the only second movie i saw with michael b jordan and it like made up because okay. the first one i saw was fantastic Four. Oh no i'm so and sorry so, oh, so yeah. oh, damn. <laughs> it was uh i don't want to talk I'm about sorry, that but anyways yeah creed was amazing yeah continue go so yeah creed um it, it was great seeing you know like we said before you know simply you know black people just you know being you know mm-hmm. they just we're simply just telling stories you know mm-hmm. this was uh i mean i feel like it was thrown around like you know this is like black rocky but i feel like when i was watching the the, the movie it felt you know it felt like it fit in the overall rocky yeah. saga mm-hmm. but Absolutely. it stand it it stood on its own merits you know what i mean the whole time there's only really been one bad rocky movie it's four <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, um, you know, like, it's like the little things really, like when you, when you see black media, like Mm. things that shouldn't be a big deal, but you know, when you see it, like, uh, I remember this one scene in particular, um, while I was watching Creed where, um, it was like after Michael B. Jordan's character went on a date with that singer Mm -hmm. and they were, that's a Thompson boy, girl. Oh, Oh, and like, uh, Michael B. Jordan was like uh, undoing her twists. I was about to say something about that scene. And it was just a sea of black women in that theater going, yes, <laughs> yes. And the thing Crisp. was, finger the, thing, snaps. The, the cool thing about that scene though is I'd never seen a scene like that in a movie before. Ever. Like even in okay. the most OG, like the wood and soul food, like yeah. even the most OG black movies, I w- did not see that. Yeah. So like seeing that scene was so cool that right. they decided to put that in there because mm-hmm. I was like, look at that, like look at that, yeah. just a black couple being vulnerable and, and comfortable around each other. This right. Is like, let me let me piggyback off that. There's a it, we didn't get into like. Well, I guess we mentioned TV, or we'll go to TV. We highlight. Yeah, we can some. go back to TV. Um, okay, there's some stuff that we because like it's really just that specific, uh, um, just the for lack of a better term, the mundane or just the day in the life type things right. of like, you know, maybe eating soul food or doing uh, your girlfriend's hair, or vice versa. Mm-hmm. There is a frame or a, a panel in a Static Shot comic, Rebirth of the Cool, yeah, where in the comic. Um, his love interest, uh, Fred, uh, Frida. Yeah. Um, he static. Virgil quit being static for a while because he lost uh, a superhero partner, mm-hmm. and so she's been. Frida's been trying to get him to like be static again to protect the city, mm-hmm. and they're talking about it. And yo, he's legit in her room, and she's picking his hair, with picking his afro oh. for him. Yeah. And like, dude, I'm like. It's like I felt like I was on the front stoop and my dad was cutting my hair yeah. again stuff like or that. Yeah, stuff like that. So and important. it's just that stuff because because people like it sounds weird to just be fawning over black people doing their hair, but in in, it's a very, in media, but it's it's just it's, it's a so thing. specific to the it's black experience. Thing. Yeah, that, yeah. And media. we're grown, so like there's things that you know it, it'll have an effect on us, yeah. but it, we're not impressionable anymore. Right. But like. There's gonna be little black kids who see Creed and see that scene, yeah. and they're gonna be like, "Oh, like it, it'll." It's like seeing my sister or my cousin getting her hair braided yeah. or something like that. It feels like home, yeah. essentially. And 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 you know, I'm glad that you know we're getting a lot more. You know, that was a perfect example of like seeing a black 
male protagonists be vulnerable mm-hmm. and you know be open as opposed to you know you know the stereotypical you know like we, we're learning about different archetypes in black film and, and African American cinema mm-hmm. um, usually you know when you have a character like you know Michael B. Jordan you know like the super the hyper masculine you know sort of buck character you right. know he's hyper aggressive and like not really emotionally vulnerable kind of disrespectful towards women mm. here we see him completely open completely right. vulnerable and i feel like when you have young you know black kids that see that film they pick up on that and you know they start to pick up on that behavior and <laughs> you know we we start to see a lot more sort of emotional variety yeah. you know like we're allowed to be humans you know something that mm-hmm. should be obvious to the greater public you but it, for some reason it's not yeah. you know we're not human in some people's eyes like we're simply stereotypes i guess we're walking uh we're a walking set of traits yeah yeah very specific traits uh, another thing i really do love about that movie um, outside of the fact that the fights are amazing, like yeah, that first are... that first one shot fight. Oh my god, that was I'm, so. Yeah, well I was done. like, that is a one, is this happening in one take? How are they? How is that? How how is that possible? It's a <laughs> boxing match. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. But also how it's basically an inverse version of Rocky's story. Yeah. Where you know, like Rocky came and he was a nobody. He was sort of the outsider. Yeah. He came and got That's the good. W. Whereas Homeboy. Adonis came from. He's got nepotism. He's going got on. nepotism, and so yeah. people were like, "Man, you just Creed son, like ain't nobody. Right. You know, you got privilege. Like he was trying to train, and they were like, oh, you, you Creed son, you think you better than me, and all that stuff.' And he had to earn respect in a different way. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, which was really cool. But they were inverse versions of the same story, and it worked. It's kind of like Force Awakens, where they're basically a different version of uh, a, a New, new Hope, Hope. You know, mm-hmm. but you can take it and make it fresh, and also just. I love the rock. I love the Rocky character. Yeah. And so like, whenever I see him, just the big lovable lug, just music. up in there. And when he met, visited his uh, wife's grave, Asian's grave, mm-hmm. I got my feelings. I was just like, oh, Rocky, you're so alone. This is so sad. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got the cancer, and I was just like, oh, oh no, oh Rocky, no, not not my chest. <laughs> Fight, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> my chest hurts. Yeah. So it was. Yeah. Creed was a really good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Can I shout out Cooley High? Cooley yeah. High? I've nice never seen that. Back. Check check that out. That nice I can't throwback. I can't remember the actor. You'll know them when you when you see them. Um, because you mentioned Queen Sugar a second ago. Yeah, Queen you Sugar. Saw at least the pilot. Uh, I I seen. All right, so I've seen Atlanta. I've seen like the pilot of Insecure. I haven't seen Queen Sugar. Yet. Okay, like a pre. He named Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> he, he named Dr. Atlanta. Um, Typical. That slide. But like that that's a good. It's a high school movie. It's like a black high school black breakfast club. Not black breakfast club that's the best way i could describe and it's like a fic it is a fictional tale but yeah. it's treated like it's almost a biopic yeah of these kids you've got yeah. the jock you've got you know my man preach the screenwriter kid who like just wants to be oh, taken taken seriously you've got um for some reason mahogany is in my mind because there's a song mm. there's a theme song that keeps it's on rotation in that whole movie and i'm i'm lost for the title right now so if anyone wants to look it up you can do that but it's just they like at the end of the movie when there's highs and lows for the characters they have like little um blurbs come up on screen like you know preach went on to be you know yeah maybe an oscar winning whatever whatever and there's like there's tragedy that kind of Every time a certain moment for anyone who's seen Cooley High, and every time it happens, mm-hmm. it hits me in the feels because I'm like, Dag, I can't, I keep expecting this to be different every time I watch it. And it's just <laughs> like, you know, it's no- going to happen every time. And it just, but that, that is a, that's such a good movie. I'll definitely have Cooley to check High. Speaking check of that the out, Breath Club, real quick, that's one of the few movies I actually want to see remade. Really? Because I feel like because. <clears throat> times in the society have changed yeah i think that you could actually get a really cool story out of the mm-hmm. breakfast club but it yeah. be like diverse and people coming from different backgrounds right like you could tell that same story but even more effectively because we have people of different walks of life and everything it wouldn't just be like yeah for for white people in the room yeah you know because back then i get it but now it's like it'd be a different thing entirely you could have like a middle eastern character and mm-hmm. like you know black yeah. character you could really do some cool stuff with that story so That's i could well actually said. see that making sense to be remade. Yeah, I would love to see that, actually. Um, 
Uh, speaking of like uh, coming of age tales, uh, I want to shout out uh, Dope. Mm. Dope is Dope is a solid one. Um, I have a I have a uh, confession to make. You've never seen Dope? No, I saw Dope, <laughs> but I thought I was gonna like it more. Oh, <laughs> it made me, it made me so did yeah. I. It made I, me I so thought. Did I. The music is fire. The it music is, is yeah. fire. The aesthetic is dope. The actors uh, are great. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, you know, I thought the actors was mm, were the great, actors are great. But I think that it was trying to do way too much in the span of one movie. Yeah, I think that it had way I too many things that, yeah. going on. Like they got this, they got the whole drug dealing thing, and then they got the 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 you know music thing, and then they got the day in the life thing, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden he's got to help his love interest get into college, and yeah. that whole thing. There's a whole lot of stuff, mm-hmm. and stuff just falls by the wayside in that movie. So I think I was kind of disappointed at the flow of the movie. I thought yeah. it was gonna be like, oh man, gonna take us to the promised land with this movie, <laughs> and I was, I was so just like, ah, it just movie. didn't happen. But I. I'm still really glad it was made yeah and that uh you know it worked where it did work because it was Certainly. so left field like it was such a left field movie in terms of like the aesthetic of it right and the 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 type of characters that we were seeing on screen mm-hmm. yeah what do you like i know you really do like that movie nami that when that when like rankings come up I, on facebook or whatever i see you name dropping a lot yeah for sure um i mean yeah dope i i appreciate dope uh, in the sense that it's the kind of movie that I would want to see more of. Like, mm-hmm. I would want to, you yeah, know, like, sure. I always think, you know, like, there's a whole bunch of, like, quirky, like, indie comedies, like, you know, say, not not indie, but, like, you know, I, I, I want, I would want a black Scott Pilgrim. You know what I mean? Like, oh, a black oh, Scott Pilgrim versus oh, the world. Man, where, like, amazing. if <laughs> if we could, like, take, like, you know, like, I that know whole I needed that. <laughs> idea. <laughs> so you said it. If we could take, like, this idea of, like, you know, a kid growing up off of video games and comic yeah. books, mm-hmm. but then you put that through the, the, the lens of hip-hop as opposed to, like, you know, garage rock and, like, indie rock right. and Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> right, in his case. If we could if we could get a movie like that, that would be fantastic. Oh, like, yeah. if we could make... Because, yeah. like, Dope was kind of hinting at that, where, like, I the whole you. aesthetic of, like, you know, this kid, you know, sort of... Grow, you know, he's stuck in the 90s, mm-hmm. you know, he's coming of age and like, you know, the whole 90s aesthetic, mm-hmm. you know, he's just sort of learning who he is as a person. Like, if we could get a movie like that, I would be ecstatic. Like, you know, something that could use uh, hip hop in that in that way. Right. Uh, almost almost like another like it's a, another character in that piece. I agree. No, yeah. that, that actually would like that. That's one of the reasons why I did really appreciate the film, even if I didn't um, like it as much as I was hoping, is because it's a hint at something yeah. more, yeah. yeah, you know, or something or a direction that we could go into, you know, for for the culture of it all. Like, I think that that'd be really cool. And actually, it is, especially when you use the Scott Pilgrim reference, because I enjoy Edgar Wright's amazing and yeah. um, O'Malley, who gave us Scott Pilgrim, is that's awesome right but like mm-hmm. that 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 more that particularly particular geeky leaning is cool because marks you and i might have talked about this before but it's like i mean like i mean absolutely no shade but that's one of the reasons the geekiness is one of the reasons i wanted to really love dope more than i did yeah because you got to start somewhere yeah and like <laughs> Morris Chestnut and Sanaa Lathan and sexy chocolate successful black people that's true has for- kind of been the the bedrock and that, yeah. that's fine because because like I said you got to start somewhere and a lot of like indie black films and web series like you know I got to shout out Black and Sexy TV yep. and Issa Rae Janine Issa Rae. Daniels yep. and stuff like that but like or Cecil Lemecki um, and people like that it's like you got to start somewhere but I'm like I'd like to see more people that are like, that look like me. That look yeah. like me. Yeah, that, that exactly. just happened because cause you hear all the time, man, black people are so diverse and stuff. And I'm like, but is it, but but is it just multiple versions of one kind of sexiness? That's right. true. Cause yeah. you could, that it? Cause man, or, you could see like all manner of, 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 uh, of white person, whereas, you know, like you got the quirky and then you got the like rebel and then you got sure. the, you know, there's a lot of different types where it's like, like you said, for the longest time it was like the Moorish chestnuts and the Idris Elbas and just like the, yeah, the, the, the dark skin. Yeah. 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 Whereas like seeing more like, you know, you got, cause dope, you got, that, yeah. and then Atlanta, you got yeah. Earn, 
who like yeah. had that great line where he was just like, I just don't intimidate anybody, man. People Niggas know I drink juice, juice and shit. Like, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it is like, yes, that's me. That's <laughs> actually, you know what? I actually want to touch on um because you said you mentioned before uh, usage of the N word. Mm-hmm. Um, the the pilot was probably yeah. one of oh, the yeah, best powerful. cases. Yes. Oh of, my of god, that particular like sort of element I of black so culture. I was so glad they did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, all right, so in the pilot, like, uh, Earn meets up with his old, uh, his white college friend, mm-hmm. and um, he says the N-word. <laughs> Not once, but twice. Mm-hmm. Um, well, wait, Namdi, are we talking about the hard R? No, a. Uh, okay. But I mean, I don't think still that it's not cool. But <laughs> yeah, um, no, but, it's good clarification actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so like he says the n word uh, around Earn, and you can see the discomfort on Earn's face. And you can confusion. see him working, yeah. yeah, working through his emotions. But because like, Earn isn't like intimidating, right? You know that that is a, a, another element of them of of him saying it around him because he was just like, oh man, I can say it around Earn, like you know. And he's he's straight up. Uh, there's like a, a custodial worker that uh, shows up right after. Mm-hmm. Like he leaves, and like he's like, "Hey, what's up, my dude?" And like he or, and hears it. He's like, and then like he asks him, "Hey, so uh, that guy would say nigga around you?" And he's like, "I whoop his ass." Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, so like it it clicked in my brain. I was like, "Wow!" So they it that whole scene was pretty much saying, you know, okay, and like what happens later when he's in front Such a of good payoff. Yeah, mm-hmm. when he's in front of Paperboy and Darius. And like he tries to get him to repeat the story, the same story, and he's like, "Really?" <laughs> and he doesn't even say "dude" or "bro." No, he just says "really." And then like Darius has like this this uh, funny comeback. It's like, "Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, uh, soccer moms need to love rap too. Like, Flo Rider's dope. Like, leave <laughs> Flo Rider alone." <laughs> Um, and he was like, I don't even know why you had me tell that story, man. And I was just like, the vindication of like <laughs> in Ern's face. Yeah, like yeah, that was that was um great. But like, I love that you know they didn't have to. Sp- and that's that's another reason why I love the show so much is because like it does address black issues, but it doesn't step on a soapbox and it doesn't like beat you over the head with, hey, so you know this is an issue. This is why you know this is why this is or this is why it's bad. There like, is. There's a distinct difference between addressing something and trying to solve it. Yeah. And I think that it's well said. you don't need everything to try and produce some sort of solution. Sometimes it just needs to be addressed. Like uh, the way that they um, addressed for a very quick moment, but an impactful one in the second episode where Erin was in lockup. Yeah. And the um the uh guy who obviously is in need of psychiatric care right. was there in the ho- uh, in the in the um jail and they were just laughing at him until he like did Had something. An episode. Yeah, and then they provoked. beat him. Yeah. yeah. And that immediately addresses that there are people in jail who are not fit right. to be there but are being kept in prisons instead of getting the help they need. That and they we have need. that issue there. And they touched on it. Mm-hmm. They let it be known. And it was mm-hmm. a very jarring, scary moment. Yeah. yeah. And it almost makes you want to be like, oh, what, is this an issue? Like, do we need to look into yeah, that? Yeah, like, it makes but it Why was that in there? But it didn't like, have no, this yeah. moment where Earn turned to the screen and was like, we need to change. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> right. not everything needs to do this. that. You shouldn't yeah. expect that from everything. You don't need you know? everything to, like, spell it out for you. And, and I mean, like, it's even, like, you know, small moments in that same episode where they were, uh, they addressed uh, transphobia yep. in the black community. Yeah, was, yeah. And, um, and Earn said it. Like, here here we have a straight black male main I character. ain't gay. Sexuality is a spectrum, and man. Said, you can yeah. do whatever you want. And that was so cool. Like, yeah, like, it was funny, like, the awkwardness of that scene. Like, he was, you know, stuck in between, like, this huge argument. But at the same time, like, this... the being weird. <laughs> I'm not. I'm <laughs> just sitting here. <laughs> I'm just trying to get relief. Right. And then, no, but it's like... I'm trying to make bail. It's, it's just it's like you. Great. It's great that, like, you know, we have a character like Earn who just went out and said it, you know, like... Mm-hmm sexuality is a spectrum it's not that big a deal you can do whatever you want i mean it doesn't matter if he's you know trans if he's you know transsexual or if he's gay or you know it doesn't matter you got to hear that from certain types of people too because you can't like there's a lot of advocation for a lot of things out there but a lot of it is coming from the mouths of white celebrities right and that doesn't make it any less of a important issue or an important message being spread yeah but some people can't hear it from that those mouths because like i don't recognize you i don't know you i've never seen you before 
before. You know, so sometimes you got to hear it from select voices. It was piggybacking off that for just a second before yeah. you move on. That was also brought up in, um, I don't remember what episode, but in uh, Insecure. In when yeah. uh, Issa's homegirl, Molly, right. uh, keeps going back and forth with, uh, his name's Darius or Richard? I don't, I don't I the, the, the Enterprise Darius. worker or whatever. Yeah. Um, while she's trying to get on the elite and, you know, date, you know, the Morris Chestnuts and Jadena and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And she <laughs> and Molly, <laughs> Molly goes back to the Enterprise worker guy, Darius, uh-huh. and they're, they're eating and, and stuff like that. And they're like, um, opening up to each other about yep. like times in college yep. or whatever. She talks about how her quote unquote sexy phase with a girl, and then Darius has literally the same thing. And then Molly's like shook, and then later yeah. with the homegirls, she's Is like, he gay? she's like, so I dropped him, and he's and because because Darius was like, I mean it was like you you know it was a one time thing. I I realized it wouldn't for me. And then Issa, like, tries to defend him. It's like, well, why is it, Molly, why is it cool for you to... Exactly. You know, it wasn't cool for you either. You know, you're yep. still dating dudes, but I, I kind of like how... Brings up e- the double standard. The, yep. the, the brings up the double standard, like you mentioned, on Atlanta with yeah. dealing with that in the black community and how Issa, uh, I think also in the vein of Marcus, isn't necessarily trying to solve it, but she just acknowledges that, you know, black people do feel... A certain way right. with these double standards and she didn't try to fix it but she did try to go to bat to make sure that people were all right and see like are you really just gonna gloss over this and just kind of prejudge this thing or another cool moment before we move on real quick was mm. in the episode where uh darius went to the uh, uh the gun the, um, gun, the gun range oh my goodness and like, in atlanta and yeah. like gun you range, know yeah. he shot he shot the uh the poster with the dog on it yeah and these two like confederate looking dudes walked <laughs> yeah. over and were like you can't just shoot dogs and he was like human targets but you're shooting human targets how is that like how is that <laughs> Was that a problem? <laughs> I, was, I was like, hey, yo, they went there. <laughs> they really did. Yes, they that. did. All right, all right. So, for the sake of God, Snell and Corey, I'm going to move on from Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, quick question. Have you guys seen Atlanta, no, or you dude. just like to rag on him because of, it's Atlanta? Let, let me just say that I personally have not seen Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to get to it, but I've been busy with other stuff. It's all good. I got another thing to yeah, say no. about. But I do just like the rag on Nomni. Me and Nomni <laughs> roast each other 24 7. Yeah, we do. Right. No, yeah. I, 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 there's a lot of things that I should have seen by now that I haven't seen because of whatever reason, so I, I get it. Mm-hmm. Um, what's so, next? Uh, let's talk about music. Yeah, yeah, let's get into mm-hmm. music. All right, so uh, a while back, uh, we talked about, you know, this sort of, uh, I, I call it the 20 year swing in terms of hip hop, but I know like it's it's a greater sort of time range in terms of like other genres where you have it's things. Everything like fashion. Fashion. Uh, everything Ooh. sees a return. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like you have 90s fashion coming back around, like you have people rocking high tops mm-hmm. and retro Jordans. <laughs> and as you can see, Gosnell is giving you fresh Prince Couture Heck, right now. Honestly, <laughs> seriously. Crop tops. Gosnell's got that crop dad. Tops. Like, crop tops. Crop tops. People forget Tracks that, seats. like, nope. Will Smith was wearing a crop top in, in, a, in a, a couple episodes of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Like, it's not gay. Yeah. Yes. It just went away. I keep trying to tell that to people. <laughs> I'm just like, it was definitely Overall. a thing. And even if it is gay, like, who cares? Right. Exactly. Will it's Smith did it. It's okay for me. Okay. <laughs> yo, yo, it's just girl, your stomach. Girls are bringing back the 90s choker. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. are. And yeah, I honestly back. don't know why or how that happened. I just I don't it just showed up one day and it's like, I was like oh, sure, who? why not? I, was like, sure, I okay. just want to know like I'm waiting who for came Jim. up with that though. Yeah. Yeah. You know what somebody, I mean? Somebody like, somebody was clearly into trends. Yeah, it's yeah. like who was the first person to decide, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, today. exactly. Yeah. I'm just waiting for jellies to come back. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Now jellies and Janko jeans about to yeah. Oh god, Janko jeans. You got you got overalls and shit coming out. Yeah, nah, I got to say I'm still I'm still waiting for parachute pants to come back. Parachute. Oh my god. <laughs> Let them stay. No, what do you mean? I might have to fight somebody if I see Janko jeans. Or maybe yeah. like, or, hey, <laughs> does anybody know if breakaway pants are like still popular? I mean, like it depends I, on what you're using them for. Just yeah, like, like for so leisure. What do you mean? Sometimes if I was I'd a wrestler, I'd wear a breakaway pants for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean definitely, but like, oh, some, yeah. sometimes you just got like pants on, but like maybe you just want to. All right, get this. Get this situation. Okay. I'm in my room, right? Uh-huh. I'm getting ready for the day. I put on some pants, breakaway pants. Yeah. I step outside and I'm like, damn, it's hotter than I thought it was. Shorts. 
Sure, there you go. It's perfect. It's go. practical. Perfect. It's 21st century. Why have we abandoned? You need to pitch them? that. Pitch yeah. That somewhere, yeah. And yeah. then trade more. Seriously. Gear. I gotta I gotta go to like some some of these hot new clothing stores. Right. Yeah. I gotta go to Nordstrom and be like, Nordstrom. listen, <laughs> I got something that'll blow your mind. Right. Oh, um, and they'll so, probably do it too. Yeah, they'll they pro- probably will. They'll probably be they like, they won't give you no credit though. <laughs> <They're wrong. laughs> nope. I think you thought. Man, I, I I'm just triggered right now because uh, old girl that came up with uh, on fleek or something, or it was <gasps> one of the sayings that is so popular you know, on Black Twitter and in the Black yeah. community. It, that was on a shirt, and she never got credit for it. What? She really? never got credit for it. You know, but. I'm glad you mentioned this, Nomi, because it's a perfect segue into how white people steal everything that black people do <laughs> that is good. And it still remains in in music, in music by the way. Yeah. Exhibit A. Exactly. Yeah. Cornrows. I was, yeah. Cornrows. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag my sister. Oh. <laughs> Back when she was 13. I'm sure, she, I'm sure she's great. I haven't met her, though. She's <laughs> she's a lovely person. You know, we all have those times when we, when we think, you know, I'm a white guy. Yeah, sure. I'll I'll get cornrows. We all have that moment. I'm glad that it's over. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I just wanted to say thank you to black people who make music because honestly, have you heard the shit that white people were doing before yes. we straight up took jazz and made yes. it, you know, rock and roll or whatever? Uh-huh. It was garbage. <laughs> it was straight garbage. It was. So, thank you for ragtime. Thank you for jazz. Thank you for funk. We still haven't been able to touch funk like that's still, you yeah, know, a mainly point. a black thing. Like we, as white people, we might be missing some like something <laughs> upstairs or something. <laughs> but like we can't like some of us just can't do rhythm. Yeah. yeah. So like, thank you for being the rhythm in my life. <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> oh, oh my god. That is the most romantic thing I've ever. I heard. Yeah. Thank you for being the rhythm in my <laughs> life. Yeah. Oh that, my that's great. Lord. That's like you are the, the beat that vows. keeps my heart beating. <laughs> Good <laughs> God. Dude, no, it's, that's a, that's a one chord. I think <laughs> yeah. I think what bothers me more than even uh, white people seeing something cool and then Columbusing the shit out of it yeah. is <laughs> then de- is then deciding when it needs to go. Yeah. That pisses me off more than anything remember, else before. <laughs> I remember when Zed fucking tweeted on Twitter talking about can we keep it's lit in 2016 mm. please and thank you K thanks bye I'm like, like first off bitch. um I'm pretty <laughs> sure white millennials did not invent the term it's lit because oh, ma- no, the man. majority of millennial slang is derived from African American vernacular mm. like we came up with Hell it's lit yeah. we came up with fam we came up with uh whole time whole time black the black gay community drives slang yeah uh, can like, I, can mm-hmm. I br- you remember I, uh, uh, um, dang, uh, not MTV, because I thought MTV would have done it. Oh, uh, sh- uh, throwing shade? Yeah. Throwing boy. Shade. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> boy. There is a show. I don't know if it's out now or if it's coming out, but it's two white people. Yes. It's called Throwing Shade. No. Oh, that they, sounds fucking and- lame as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. not even, I'm just upset. I'm not throwing shade. No one asked me to write the show, but I'm just like, I mean, now I hear uh, the male co-host show. is like, gay, so part of me is like, so m- m- do you sort of get credit? To to your point earlier about, uh, yeah. uh, because uh, I'm because yeah. I'm like because my rebuttal to you to our group of friends was like, uh, next thing Cindy Crawford and what's her face from Suicide Squad will be serving face, because I'm pretty oh sure that's God. right. I'm pretty sure Cara Delevingne in. Yes, they're reserving uh, face. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> bro, like what? Was, but just anyway, continue. Like, I no, did, yeah, like uh, <laughs> I'm just I, like I hate it when people like decide they want to police. You know when things are cool or not. It's like it's you know white people will see something, and you know they'll think it's cool, mm-hmm. and then you know when Which they you start it to oh cool. yeah fine. it's cool it's fine like if you guys it's use it ch- yeah but then if y'all start to overuse it <laughs> and then you tell us that we need to stop white people stop getting, dabbing white people getting hold of uh, of of certain things is like the equivalent of your parents getting a hold of it yeah oh, where it's man, like it my mom <laughs> heard uh uh that the the old DMX song um i think it's it's not called throw party but it's like uh 
you know, y'all gonna make me lose. No, I what the song my is parents called. Do. Yeah, no. and my parents got a hold of it and just never let go. One of my dad's favorite. <laughs> or like, or or uh, uh, Bootylicious, where my mom just ran in one day and she was making dinner and she was like, I don't think you're ready for spaghetti. No, like, no. I totally see your mom. Do- <laughs> I might as well just been in the kitchen with you guys. It's the equivalent of that, where it's just like you know it's over now because like uh, and she they flashes just got- you that corny Man. Mama Ellison grin, Mama. like she like she knows. I ain't mean to put your government out there like that, but like and when now she I gotta knows, go off the grid. <laughs> Yo, that's a great man. comparison. But it's like, yeah, it's just, you know it's over then because they're yeah. going to take it and they're just going to run, run all it. over the place yeah. with it. And like I said, then they're going to be like, you know, this is whack now. Let's just take it off. And I'm just like, excuse you. I'm going to say it's lit. I'm going to say it's lit for as long as I damn well please, <laughs> sir. You don't know. Like, it's not official until it ends up on like an MTV countdown of like top 10 mm. slang that we need to leave in 2016 or what? Twerking. I, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, twerking Buzz, and Buzzfeed. shit. Buzzfeed. Buzzfeed. Oh, yeah. Top 10 slang that you need to leave in 2016. The Number one, bit. it's lit. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That was oh, great. Yo, shout out to Corey, who's like really like the true MVP. <laughs> man. Yeah. I'm feeling pretty woke right now. <laughs> God, then, this like, is good. Or like the fact that there was a period of time where there was a headline that literally said Miley Cyrus, the queen of twerk. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I I just, yeah, I oh, my oh my God. Who? <laughs> what? My fist just twitched right now. Like, <laughs> what? But with what ass? With what? Exactly. She's got a long yeah. back with a crack in <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> That's cool, bloody. <laughs> Welcome back to the roast. I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying that there aren't little booty girls out there who can do which work, but Molly Cyrus, come on, man. No, nah, we can't. We I'm mm-hmm. not gonna give her that title of queen of twerking. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, like I can't mm-hmm. do that. It's not. It can't. It, no. But then again, it also uh, basically her name like is Queen tw- Bay. It also who has makes been it seem, twerking since the '90s. Yeah, before it, also, it was twerking. It also makes it seem as though twerking is some sort of a twin, uh, a trend. Yeah. When it's really, it's, it's a style of dance. It's, it's a dance. It's not you like- You are shaking, you're, you are booty shaking. Yeah, it's That's not what a it trend. always was. Yeah. You got Russians <laughs> doing classes, <laughs> doing like legit classes and you like- You know the yeah. funny thing about that though is like, Russians and like, uh, like- um, People from I don't like know the Czech it's, Republic yeah, and shit. Yeah, or like Koreans yeah. as well. Mm. They work so hard <laughs> so you're just like looking at them like they're really they really worked at this this is no this is no they're no half ass in this they, they're no, like right. i'm no gonna pun, learn to no twerk pun, no intended. pun intended are you <laughs> telling me that russians and che- czechs are learning to twerk yes they've been twerking for the longest time what so and yeah Corey johnson it. wink wink oh <laughs> and killing it i was like oh wow I'm impressed. Shit, I gotta take some Shout out. Shout <laughs> Corey's um, got some research to right, do. So go back to music, sorry. Yeah, to yeah, go back to music. Whole tangent. We, I mean, we got like a, an hour, just about an hour left, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we, we've we already crossed over the hour, Mark. Oh, okay. okay. All right, well, yeah, uh, hidden uh, music. Uh, so we're talking about like trends coming back. So, you know, this whole funk revival yeah. mm-hmm. with- uh, Pimple T- Butterfly. Yeah, mm-hmm. TDE with Kendrick's album. Um, Man, uh, uh, is is funk? Did funk really? Um, I haven't been able to listen to a lot of it. Uh, influence Childish's yeah, last oh, album. Oh, yeah, that was um, nothing but okay. funk. Oh, Bru- yeah, Bruno Mars or no, Twenty Four K. That was more like eighties pop, eighties nineties pop. Okay, pop. okay, yeah. Yes. So never mind. Yeah. But, but um, Awaken My Love. Okay, Awaken My Love was the that was him doing his best like Sly and the Family Stone impression Funkadelic Ooh. Funkadelic mm-hmm. impression Bootsy Collins Bootsy Co- yeah. yeah yeah shout out to Parliament Funkadelic I saw yes. them at Ram's Head Live a few years ago probably my, one oh, of wow. my favorite concerts ever that shit was funky how mm. much of a contact high did you get and are you okay <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I already went pretty lit. Because <laughs> I feel like if I went to a Parliament con- uh, concert, I would come out thinking I was an alien somehow, and yeah. I didn't even go in smoking, but then I came out and somehow I'm addicted to... <laughs> I joined the mothership that night. Ooh. The only thing I didn't like, though, is that he brought his grandson on to rap. I mean, like, that's cool and everything, but his grandson's not that great of a rapper. Okay. It didn't that's last that long. Shame. It was like it was like a steady stream of funk, and then it was like rap, bad rap, bad rap. <laughs> and then it was like, all right, all right, get off the stage, let's get back to the funk. Um, all right, if we're talking about black music, we have to touch on. Uh, well, first and foremost, let's. Uh, 
unpack to Pimp a Butterfly just a little bit. Mm. Um, yo, that album, when I listened to it the, for the first time, I think it was right around when I hit the track You, mm. I was like, this is mm. something else. Mm. Like that whole track, it like I'm <laughs> like I'm kind of getting emotional just thinking about it. Like just the idea of him in the studio. It sounded like he was legit, like method crying and like yeah. drinking a forty yeah. in the booth recording that song. Kendrick Lamar is one of the few rappers that I could see transitioning into an actor because yeah. looking at yeah. his music videos, I'm like, bro, you might be able to really act. Yeah, like I think you could do it. He could know? definitely do it. Cause like I mean, watching um, I don't know if you've seen that short film, God Is Gangster. Yep. Yeah, that I was a music not. video for I'll for you and for uh for free or for sale. The for free video, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where it's basically like a um, it looks like a uh, uh, what's his name, Wes Anderson. A uh, Wes Anderson. Yeah. I didn't and even I'm just, think about that. Yeah, and this man's walking around. This dick ain't and free. free. <laughs> and I'm like, this is most, this ain't the most quirky ass video. Yeah, <laughs> like he could really he could really do something special. And we're Hell talking about. Nah. <laughs> 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 yes. And we're this is my favorite song in the album. <laughs> this like, dick ain't free. <laughs> I mean, baby. baby. <laughs> so I'm a, and then at the end, I'm gonna get my homie Uncle Sam to fuck yes. you up. And that was God. so dope. And how it like it, she's awesome too. Oh, and like, how it track. like yeah, like it bleeds into it King Kuntu. Yes. Oh, like man. so great. Mm. And um, it, shout out to kick. the media center. Uh, a couple years, uh, my senior year uh-huh. for the EMF Welcome Back Party. Yeah, uh, Matt Brooks, if you're listening, you were Matt Brooks and I Matt caught Brooks. each other as I suddenly King Kunta is playing in the EMF, and Matt Brooks and I looked at each other like, <laughs> "What? What is happening? <laughs> and why is it okay? <laughs> because it is right. They are blasting King Kunta in the EMF, in the EMF. Welcome Back Party. Welcome Back Party. I remember when King oh, Kunta first man. came on, and I wanted to kick someone in the face. Man. Like I was just like, <laughs> "Boy, what? <laughs> that was if I could pick Bitch, where were you when I was walking? Exactly. Mm. <laughs> now I'm in the gang, got the whole world Ooh. talking King Kunta. Everybody oh, want to cut the legs off him. Mm-hmm. Kunta, mm-hmm. black." man taking no losses oh yeah like, what the <laughs> hell oh, god like that, that that's like the perfect fight song like even more so than like black or the bear okay i need to touch on all right okay. so kendrick's grammy performance man, right no uh, yeah that was the performance that got me into kendrick because I, I never gave him a chance before but like that that whole yeah, that. when he walked when he walked in like <laughs> in with the, with the handcuffs yeah. mm-hmm. and then he st- he went straight into black or the berry yo when I say those white people in the crowd look terrified, sure, <laughs> I literally like that one lady who hey, who leads the meme of just <laughs> yeah. she's just standing. This, I can't even do it because it's so weird. She just stone face, stone face. I'm like yo, and then like it it leads from like and just how creative like not just Kendrick but that entire camp TDE is like they are truly black hippies like they are yeah. coming up with the most like creative out there left field ideas to portray the American black experience and what yeah. they grew up with like it's so dope like the fact that you know after Black of the Berry and like he was like so as we proceed to give you what like you find out that the ju- the prison suits are like it's like black lit and they yeah. have tribal markings yep. on it and then they and then it transitions from that to we gonna be all right and like it's like a tribal version we of that gonna, song oh, all right <laughs> man all right we is, talk about that all right is oh, it's gosh. a modern day negro spiritual yeah because yes. when i heard yes. that song i was just it. i was yeah. sitting there like maybe we are <laughs> Maybe we are. Maybe we are. Maybe Kendrick. we are. Yeah, and like then Donald Trump. Got <laughs> <laughs> that's why we need it. Psych. <laughs> you thought uh, no. that because it's. I don't know if the the context isn't exactly the same. I mean, there's the uh, the course because like I gotta yeah. touch on this because my first foray, the first bit of hip hop I well the first hip hop I ever consciously listened to intentionally to was Kanye and Lupe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Lupe. I'll get to that with whatever remaining time we have later. Mm. But when times got hard, if there, I would listen to, I would think, I would think about Stronger from Kanye, mm. but I would actually listen to um, Just Might Be Okay yes. by Lupe from Food yep. and Liquor. Mm-hmm. But then we gonna be all, but then All Right came out and I was just like, whoa, yeah. anytime times get hard, I'm like, we just might <laughs> like you said we just might yeah so uh, like that that album what was really cool about that 
um, in comparison. Because, like, Good Kid, Mad City, the great album, the fantastic album. Mm-hmm. But then somewhere along the line, between the, the the lull period between Good Kid, Mad City and Temper Butterfly, I don't know what Kendrick did. It was almost like he went back to Africa <laughs> and did some mushrooms yeah. or something <laughs> and found and joined himself. a tribe or something. Yeah, because he came back weird. He <laughs> and it bleeds throughout that entire album mm-hmm. just with the way that he's messing around with his voice yeah. or the way that he's the music that he's rapping on or just the, the themes on the album yeah, or the I fact that he conjures up the spirit of Tupac to talk to him at oh, the end. Oh no, of that had like, me so shook. That had me so shook. I was yeah. shook. I was like, I was like, okay, he's he's reading the the poem that's going throughout the entire album. Like, he's oh, reading it, okay. and then he's like, so what you think? And I'm like, oh, is he talking to me? And then I hear Tupac's and voice, Pac, and I'm oh, like, no, nah, I no, wanted to throw my, I no. wanted to throw my phone. <laughs> Witchcraft. Exactly. <laughs> like, what in the hell is going on? I wasn't ready. I was not at holograms all. is one thing, but you're but not you, about to be interviewing and Tupac, <laughs> the ghost of Tupac, and on your album. He and and Kendrick was just so he harnessed the weird in that album. And one of my favorite things about an artist, especially a black artist, yeah. Uh, is when they just allow themselves to be odd. Yeah. Because for so long, especially because gangster rap for so long made it like, mm. you know, you got to be hard, you, you know, that's unfeeling. Strength. That's yeah. the, that's strength. Mm. And it made sense in the time period, of course. Yeah. Mm. But like somewhere along the line, man, like you got to just, you can still be there's hard, more. but at the same time, there's oddities and idiosyncrasies that we have that yeah. might be a little left field. Like even on a uh, Schoolboy Q's recent album, yeah, blank he face. allowed himself to get as weird as you can get on a gangster rap album. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like there's things that you can do, and I appreciated Kendrick so much for just letting himself go. Yeah, and just it's to the point. I don't even. Of course, I want to hear more music from him, but mm. I kind of don't even want to hear another album from right. him. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm for like, bro, I don't know what you about to do next. <laughs> next. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I'm still digesting. I'm giving yeah, butterfly. People are still digesting that album. You could do like thesis projects on that on album. That, yep. Yeah, I'm already pretty sure that people have done that. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's done that. All right, speaking of albums that deserve to have a thesis done on them, we got to talk about Beyonce's Lemonade. We just have to. Because um, that. I. Use okay, so I've always liked Beyonce. Same, yeah. like I always, and usually mostly because of the way she looked. I'm gonna okay, be yeah, I always liked Beyonce, but I, her music was so overtly safe, right? And also, it was so geared toward you know like the things that you would expect a a, a, a female centric pop song to be, mm, right? That it was even if I appreciated the singing on it, I couldn't really like gravitate toward it too much. Mm-hmm. So like I always appreciated her as a talent, but I was never really I don't say a fan. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. I just appreciated. You her. you could say yeah. the same for Taylor Swift. She you know you're writing for your female fr- fans and yeah. that's cool. That's, yeah. Then her self titled album came out, <clears throat> and I was like, I was listening to it. I was like. I can bangs with this. Like, this is actually really cool. Uh-huh. I like that this. was that was 2013, right? Mm. 14? I think it was 14. Yeah, and it just came out of nowhere. Right. I was legit <laughs> editing it just upstairs dropped. in the media center my senior year. Uh-huh. And we're all, I, every, all of us were editing. And suddenly the girls behind me just start going crazy. What? Because Beyonce just, I'm, I'm just at the terminal. And I just turn, I'm like, what? What is going on? And like, going on? Suddenly, everyone's taking a break from their project. Right. I just imagine like Beyonce, <laughs> Beyonce sitting like in a presidential chair, and this is like the 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 switch. Yes, <laughs> and she just says, "Drop it," <laughs> and the world went insane. And so, like that album was great, and then Lemonade came out, and this <clears throat> this Bama said, "You know what? I'm not going to do what I did last this time. Texas, I'm just going to announce this album." Through a, through a HBO yes. short film. And I'm like, of course, because... You're Beyonce. Why not? Of course you can do that. Of course you would do that. Right. And so I was just like, I heard that album, and I was like, man, Ayo, Beyonce is like operating on a completely, completely different, different level, level right now. Yeah. Like her Grammy performance, man. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like just the, the hell is that? <laughs> And I mean that in the best way possible. Yeah, like, <laughs> a beautiful she, piece of all of our heads yeah. still. We're still trying to grasp. There's a period of, yeah. there's a moment about two minutes in that I didn't even think she was going to perform. Mm. Like, she was just sitting there talking 
mm. monologuing, <laughs> looking all. And I was just like, Ariel. She ain't. Yeah. Even, she probably not even gonna sing nothing. She's not. <laughs> and then, she just gonna be on there for like. <laughs> but then she ends up singing and, and then like, yeah, she's like looking like the sun god, the black fertility god is yeah. And I was just, and I watched all the other Grammy performances. Cause that's what I usually do now. Was I just watch everything on YouTube because mm. I don't feel like watching the show. And right. I saw the other performances. I'm like. Yeah, nobody's nobody's doing what she did. No, yeah, that was insane. <laughs> yeah, we could have Daft Punk, and he still wasn't as like <laughs> Daft Punk. Do, they did what Daft Punk did, and like was Weekend was singing, too, yeah. and like it was it was good and everything. But yeah. you know, it was what it was. Yeah, it was yeah. what it was. But Lemonade, yeah, it's it's oh, it's it's like a diary entry, and it's way too personal at certain points. Where I'm just like. Did I hear something I wasn't supposed to? <laughs> <laughs> um, wasn't uh, wasn't Lemonade like the one of the first visual albums? I'm probably getting that like way wrong, but about, that was done by Beyonce. No, that no or, Beyonce. Or, the, her or, or, Lemonade said? in general, like one of the first like visual albums that was like completely told through like film too. I think so. I believe like, so. Yeah. There has been visual albums in terms of like you drop a disc <clears> and it's the album and then you drop the disc and it's the music videos yeah. but outside of but I can't think of outside of Runaway for mm. Kanye's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy I can't think of another album that was dropped and there's an accompanying full length film right. mm -hmm. to go along with it so I, I, I can't think of any others there's outside not, there probably is others you know Thriller I'm sure or the Beatles did it Purple or, Rain or anything no yeah. those are because okay. Thriller was a Short film, but it oh, only, oh, okay. it was For only the, the thriller song, the song. Yeah. Okay. yeah, not the entire album. Yo, we gotta hit on um her her sister Solange though, because she's also. she's been she's been doing God's work. So as well. so I'm new to I'm I'm crazy new. Yeah, I was trapped in a bubble because I remember I told Marx this. I remember when people were dragging Solange. When she first came out, and, yeah. and people were for not I, being Beyonce, for not being Beyonce, that was literally thank, the only reason. Thank <laughs> Solange, like, <laughs> thank you, Solange, for hey, not, you're being not being your Beyonce. Big Hold on a minute. <laughs> yes, that's literally get, what it was. Get out of here, but so, <laughs> Junior Knowles. I had Junior nothing Knowles. against her. I just happened to not listen to her back then, uh, yeah. and, and I just moved on. And then uh, seat at the table mm -hmm. dropped. I didn't even know what it was called. I just saw Solange with butterflies in her hair, and I'm like, oh, what's what's this what's going on and then I just started seeing these I just started seeing the out I can't remember the titles of some of the songs I have one of them Cranes um, in the Sky Cranes Rise Cranes in the Weary sky. Mad <laughs> Don't Touch My Hair <laughs> yes and I'm just like okay Don't Touch My Hair was the one that good, I uh, I, one. I uh -huh. think I saw it like on Pitchfork or something mm -hmm. and I was just like oh so Solange Don't Touch My Hair okay <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right that's where we're going today so i listened to it and i was like oh wow okay all right solange i'm gonna see i'm gonna see where you're going with this and then she dropped seat at the table and i was like i am legitimately impressed like it was the first time that she was <clears throat> able to come out of the beyonce shadow yep. and just mm -hmm. be her own artist and i think because for she's been doing music for a long time but for the longest time it was just this like nondescript generally kind of low stakes R&B music and mm -hmm. it was just fine you know if her sister wasn't Beyonce it probably would have stood out a bit more but mm -hmm. because Beyonce is this force of nature over here yeah. and you're dropping like nondescript pop music right there you're just not gonna stand out and then this time she did that and it's just like alright I hope you keep that up yeah I hope <laughs> she really does cause like she found her niche like I feel Beyonce's more so like mainstream sort of pop R&B like bombast Beyonce is like this goddess, and then here's Solange being carefree black girl. And yeah, so it yeah. kind of works like on. She two can do spectrums. things Beyonce can't do, yeah. which is actually mm -hmm. kind of cool. So yeah. Um. All right. So we're at uh the uh, just about two minutes. <laughs> You're just about two minutes left. So maybe, maybe it's time to go around this uh imaginary table uh -huh. and say what we would like to see from black media going forward okay yeah so what do you guys want to see more of uh and it doesn't matter what like medium like what do you want to see more of in the future um i just want to see just more embracing of the weird really like i just want to see us just continue to not necessarily saying that everything that comes out that's black now has to be like left field and odd but just like accepting that we can just do various things mm -hmm. we can make genre films we can make i i'd love to see a black sci-fi film or mm -hmm. you know i just want to see us 
push ourselves and push the culture more. That's yeah, what. and keep keep taking risks yeah. is is good because you do have to start somewhere. Like you said, sci-fi films. So I think of like After Earth was hard on on a lot of us, but I'm, I'm still I'm still glad. Boy, oh boy. I'm still glad that you tried because it's not fair to say you have to be immaculate the moment you. Yeah. No, you you, you gotta you gotta, you gotta try start. First. You gotta start somewhere, and I'm I'm glad we are taking risks and exercising the right to do something because I, I think Chris Rock said something like. You know, black people need to be allowed to fail mm-hmm. and, and just fail. No more of this. Oh, it had to be black. You know, you you know how you know how you feel when that happens. Yeah, it's like yeah. we need to just be able to experiment, get it wrong, and just. Keep Which pushing. is true, just because like for so long black so hope people we keep doing that. because we've struggled for so long. When we finally get a piece of the pie or a seat at the table, mm-hmm. we really feel like we need to show out or be great because then like I said uh, in the car there's that distinct possibility that we won't get that shot again Mm -hmm. and so Chris Rock said it what's Chris Rock said is apt though we need to be able to fail because white people always been able to fail because they already had the advantage so there's a certain expectation that's not there Mm. you know whereas like people of color in general but we can speak to this because we're black is that we need to be able to just trip and fall sometimes and then get back up and then learn from what we did and then get better. Yeah. Um, uh, Gus, you have anything <laughs> you want to see from black? What do you, you want to see from black media in the future, Gus, now? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess, like, I, I, I see it's happening already. Um, just, like, the combination of combining visuals with music. Because, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. like, you're seeing it now with, like, Lemonade and, like, Solange's albums and Kendrick Lamar and, like, all this other stuff. And I, I just think, like, pushing that because like i'm a visual artist so like i'm all about like what you see and so just like keep pushing that Mm -hmm. and like exploring it a little bit more would be really cool Mm -hmm. so Um, i yeah i mean like i I pretty much echo your sentiments you know uh i want us to you know make more genre films i want us to you know make you know our versions of our interpretations of you know our scott pilgrims and you know our you know our star wars are you know a lot more I want us to take more chances on, you know, being weird and being different as opposed to, you know, telling conventional stories right. of blackness, you know, because I mean, you know, at, you know, we should bring attention to issues, but at the same time, we should be allowed to be just as weird as our white counterparts. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, that does that just doesn't go for, you know, black people that goes for all people of color, really, mm-hmm. you know, any anybody that isn't, you know white or you know a straight white male i guess you know we we should be able to experiment and tell the stories that we want to tell you know and not have to sit into these constant stereotypes all the fucking time yes right yes Mm -hmm. let's snap to that and i I hope it does because when the when the secondary person for lack of a better term like jumps ahead and starts to succeed to your point everybody else starts it carry it's not just black people right like you said it carries it, it it contributes to other people getting their stories and their experience exactly out of right well, breaking it's, that glass ceiling if we're really meant to believe in diversity one group of people getting a w is a mm-hmm. it should be a w for all of us like the fact that fresh off the boat is is um popular mm-hmm. and well received blackish as well like this is a w for more people of color getting to tell stories master of mm-hmm. yeah. um black right. Panther 2018 <laughs> <laughs> yeah black panther <laughs> um all right, so uh, that's that's all for the real. Um, I want to thank uh, Josiah and Marcus for uh, giving us their time, chatting it up with us. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Um, yeah. Happy Black History Month. Happy yes, Black Hell History yeah. Month. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, any announcements, uh, LKT wise, that we want to plug? Any plugs for social media? Yeah, plug something, uh, Josiah, Marcus. Um. Uh, let's see. You can find me on Instagram at Felon Degenerous. Uh, <laughs> Felon Degenerous. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it, where the where the where the O is in Felon is actually a, a zero. But yeah, Felon Degenerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Both are at uh, Joe Brad Online. Awesome. Uh, you can follow me on uh, Instagram. Uh, I'm Young Odo. Uh, follow me on Twitter. At, I'm at Groovy Nam. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, and yeah follow the be sure to follow the real 
on social media as well. Uh, follow Lambda Capital. Follow Lambda Capital as well across all forms of social media uh, for any updates, uh, for any uh, events and screenings. Uh, like our 48 film festival that's happening today. In like a few, <laughs> in, in like an hour few, or two. Like, yeah, yeah, which, I mean, I don't know why I plugged that because the episode's <laughs> going to be out much <laughs> later. But, um, uh, yeah, follow us for uh, updates on uh, more episodes. We do have a lot more episodes coming for you guys this semester. Um, our next episode, we're super excited about it. It's going to be our big Studio Ghibli episode with Ooh, some special yes. guests. So yeah. that's going to be a fun time. Nice. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for checking uh, in with The Real, and we will catch you all next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.